Hello and welcome to the Red Menace Podcast. We're a comedy news podcast that we do podcasty things. We We news, sure do. News jokes, technical difficulties. My name's Chris Bolson. And I'm Alison Hoare. And this is the second time we've recorded this introduction. And the third time we've started a phone call. We've so, migrated from FaceTime to Skype because FaceTime crashed literally four times. It, it was unbelievable, frankly. <laughs> it's an excessive number of times. It was a for- lot of times for us to <laughs> not even get past the introduction for it to crash. So now we're using the bad program again and we'll see how long this lasts. Um, yeah, it's going to be a fun little experience. Um, yeah, it's an interesting, interesting <laughs> times. It bodes well for my future profession as a sort of audio person. It sure um, does. I can't think of anything funny to say in this intro. No. Do we want to just go into the podcast? So, yeah, I mean, we were going to, like, talk about the fact that I will yes. be migrating to another country soon and how that may impact the quality of the audio, but I feel like we've just, like started early to get the people ben- used to it before the I leave the country. The benchmark is very low. The like benchmark is, is very a- low because we're already having technical difficulties and we're in the same country. So so you're going to, at the end of April, be going to Indonesia, is that correct? Indonesia, yes. Yes, Alison will be going there for a year. Um, yes. And I expected Alison would say, hey, Chris, we can't record this podcast anymore because I'm going to be in a different country. No. Nah. No, nah, Alison's a trooper and was like, no, I'll just do it from Indonesia. It'll I'll be fine. I'll do it from Indonesia. Yeah, we'll, we'll be fine. And to be honest, we're in Australia. My my recording and internet will probably be better in Indonesia than it is here. I'm pretty excited about that. I'm I, also I excited. will imagine that it's probably like higher, you know, higher bandwidth speed in Jakarta than it is here That's in true. the lovely city of Sydney. It's like, we live so close to each other, but we sound so far away from each we other. We do, just... and the, the time lag is astounding, considering <laughs> we are in the same city right now. Yeah, no, I get that. I tend to offset your audio back by about half a second to try and make it sound more natural when you laugh at the things that I say. It's bizarre. Because um, otherwise, weird. I'll say something, and then I'll be like, I'll say, Chris says funny joke, beat. <laughs> <laughs> It just sounds like I don't really think it's funny. Like, you've had to hold up the please laugh now sign. I mean, that's what we do, but well, the I audience mean, I, doesn't yeah, need to I, know that. Every time yeah. I make a joke, I do text you and say, I'm making a joke. I'm please making laugh a joke now. Prepare to laugh. T minus three, two, one. <laughs> and it's just getting that timing because sometimes it's like, is it on one or is it yeah, one and then Sometimes go? I'm like dozing off and it's like, oh, <laughs> you know, I've got, oh, shit. Chris just made a joke. I've got to, um, I've got to, you know, laugh at that now, I suppose. Um, but yeah, so at the end of April, for a week or two, there will be a temporary interruption of service. Yes. Um, but then we will supposedly be back. We and... will be back, because I will have internet, and I will make sure of that, because I will not survive without internet. Uh, and my, as... my life is boring, so it will be unchanged, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's face it, I'll, ma- I'll find a way to make this work. We will That's make it true. happen. I've got... You know, equipment that we can work with, and we'll, we'll get something done. We'll make yeah, a podcast like, happen. We're the new pirate radio. It's just exactly, we're exactly. On the edge. Yeah. Do you have Do you have a story to start us off? Ooh. Now this is strange because the Skype conversation is on the same computer as the as the stories. Oh. Okay. Uh, I've got a few. Now this, I'm going to give you a bit of a choice about uh, what you want to start with. It's Ooh, a bit like fun. A- Choose your own adventure. Do you want to start with uh, something lewd, something a little political, or something a little spooky? Let's... Okay, I want in this order. Spooky, political, lewd. Spooky, political, lewd. Okay, we're doing that. Yeah, Uh, I feel like we often end with lewd, and I'm into that as this. It works. Yeah, it's good. Then people know to tune out by the end of it if they are (laughs) a little bit sensitive to that kind of content. Exactly. Uh, Yeah, so we'll start with spooky. And then we'll get into political, and then we'll get into lewd. Awesome. All right. Spoopo lewd. Don't say that again. I don't like it. <laughs> so start with the spoo of our spoopo lewd. Please. Um, <laughs> please stop saying. It sounds, <laughs> it sounds like some sort of bodily function that it I don't want to think like about. It does sound like a bodily function. <laughs> It's not ideal. Um, but here we go. This is from the Boston Globe in the great country of... The U.S. of A. Of Boston. 
of Boston. Boston, Massachusetts? Is Gone that down. correct? Yeah, that's right. Okay. That's where Matt, where Matt Damon's from. Okay, sure. Well, that's important. The, the Departed. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, you know, topical because it is a spooky story that we're getting into. Well, actually, it's not spooky. I missold it. I mean, The Departed but... is a crime movie, but never mind. Um... <laughs> I see it. It just sounds like a movie about people who died. Um, I mean, that does happen in it. Well, um, if, if people die, then it's a little bit spooky because the assumption is that they come back as a ghost and are haunting the main character for the rest of the movie. Well, okay. Spoils for <laughs> The Departed. It came out in 2006. Um, so Leonardo DiCaprio is killed near yeah, the end of sure. the movie. And he doesn't haunt Matt Damon, but, like, Matt Damon is later killed as retribution for the death of well, Leonardo DiCaprio. And I feel like that's like a that's haunting. That's pretty spooky, isn't it? Like, yeah. that's a real-life haunting. And he gets killed by Mark Wahlberg, who is creepy as fuck. Yeah, so, well, like, that's very spooky. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to read the headline. And this is about a supermarket chain in the United States, I assume. It's co- it says, Market Basket says stores are ghost-free. After reported sighting in <laughs> Wilmington store. Aren't all stores ghost free? Well, I would hope so. I mean, I'm except for, like, cons- crystal stores, obviously. I'm a little bit concerned that this store has to, like, um, specify that it is, in fact, ghost free. That well, there the- are no ghosts in our supermarket. The implication is that there used to be. Well, the implication when someone has to, like say that there's no ghosts is i automatically assume there's a ghost and they're trying to cover it up hauntings like because you don't have to claim that you didn't do something it's like the you know if i see a sign that says no ghosts here i just assume an exorcism was performed recently yeah but it probably didn't stick exorcisms don't always stick you know that's true uh what's his face on youtube who posted the cat status Oh, <laughs> what, about how Shane Dawson definitely fucked his cat. Yeah, about, you know, well, yeah, Shane Dawson posting a, a Twitter tweet. If, if about you randomly we... post to Twitter, I swear I did not fuck my cat. Why is everybody saying I fucked my cat? Then I think I'm it's because you fucked your cat. That's the assumption. And so it's the same assumption here. The fact that Market Basket is coming out with a statement that their stores are ghost free, I'm assuming there's a ghost there now. I didn't care about Market Basket or their ghost status until now, but you now I know these stores are haunted. You can apply that concept to almost anything. Like if I sell you not rancid shrimp, yeah, I think I'm you- like the fact you need to specify it's not <laughs> rancid. I'm assuming it's rancid. It either means it's it's not rancid, but I have previously sold rancid shrimp, or I'm exactly. known for selling rancid shrimp, both of which are good reasons to not buy my produce. It's like the McDonald's chicken nuggets here, having a big, now with real chicken. Like, now with 100% <laughs> real chicken breast meat, and you're like, I'm sorry? What was it before? Like, what was it before? That's the what question. Was, what did I eat from my whole childhood? <laughs> was it, like, the skin of the donkey? Like, it's what cardboard. was I consuming? Wet Wet cardboard. <laughs> wet the cardboard delicious mixed wet cardboard taste. With, with uh, the human flesh of children. <laughs> so this is by Stephen Ear for the Boston Globe. And he writes, Market Basket boasts a lot of products from deli meat to fruits and vegetables. But you're not, you're not likely to find any ghosts or ghoulish creatures among the items in stock. At least, that's according to a spokeswoman for the supermarket chain, who had to set the record straight this week after someone posted on social media that an apparition wearing Victorian-era clothing had been spotted floating through a store in Wilmington, a claim that led to national news coverage about the alleged encounter. Well, that's firstly, that's sad. Secondly, this would be a fun prank to pull, to (laughs) set up like a magnet thing and put on like Victorian, I'll put on a Victorian era dress and we'll Mm. get a big magnet on my shoes and we'll get a big magnet underneath me and we'll make me float around Woolworths and Woolworths is going to have to pay me to stop. They will have to post a status on Twitter saying that their stores are ghost free. I'm always looking for a new scam to pull. So I think this sounds like a good one. (laughs) What? I just try to think of like what produce could feasibly be haunted like any meat could be haunted easy. any meat yeah there's a lot of souls attached to that yeah let's be honest all meat is haunted and sure sure that's why i can't sleep at night mm-hmm. um fruit because <laughs> the, the souls of all the animals that you've consumed <laughs> yeah, are haunting that's the, you constantly the noi- those are the noises that i hear when i go to sleep yeah um 
So fruit, I'm trying to think. Because, like, I think there could be, like, a bad thing happened in that tree. Like, once a child fell from the tree and was mm. a horrible accident. And now yeah, that tree course, is haunted. Yeah, of course. Well, you know, that- like, the, the treatment of uh, workers on farms... You know, oh, that's true. So it's haunted by poor labor laws. It, it's haunted by very <laughs> poor labor laws and underpaid workers, which is like, I'm with the ghosts, frankly. They're just if, trying to unionize. That's all they're doing. We, if we go with the concept of there's no ethical consumption under capitalism, then logically, literally all things we can buy are haunted by exploitation. <laughs> so Exactly. Exactly. We firstly, are... This yeah. is the most meaningful thing I've ever said on this podcast. Well, by shall we mile. ruin this by getting into what Justine Griffin, the spokesperson for Market Basket, has said? Because, you know, if you're like a spokesperson for a big corporation, you're going to turn anything into corporate spin, right? That's going to be the way that you operate. Excuse me, I'm sleepy. <laughs> it's, it's <the laughs> so how do you turn a ghost into corporate spin, Chris? Um, say that it's spooky how low our prices are. Well, that's exactly um, what I was going to say as well. That's a solid one. Uh, and that's very similar to what the woman has chosen <laughs> to say. So this it took is what me she literally says. two seconds to come up with. Well, Surely she can do better. It's her job. As far as we know, all of our stores are ghost free. But if there's anything to it, she's probably tr- attracted to our Victorian era prices. So, like, they're in pound sterling? Like, <laughs> I suppose so. <laughs> um, yeah, can I, exactly. Another they, good they one would be... They only accept the British pound at this... <laughs> the only ghosts that we have on the premises are the ghosts of our competing stores. That's another <laughs> good one. Yes, I like that. Uh, the rumors... Are- <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I've got nothing. I, I've got nothing either. I'm just going to re- continue reading the story. <laughs> that was the longest silence in human history. <laughs> it's super awkward. I think we were both just waiting for each other to like yeah, exactly. continue that joke to... and then it didn't happen. So now there we're just going to no pretend that to silence make. didn't happen. Yeah. The rumours about the ghost sighting began earlier this month after someone asked users in a private Facebook group for the Wilmington residents whether they'd ever encountered a spirit while shopping for food. <laughs> This is going to sound really strange, the person wrote, but has anyone ever seen a ghost in the Wilmington market basket? The person person later elaborated in the comments section of the post and described the ghost as an old Victorian-era woman in her nightgown near the frozen peas, lol. So do we think that the Wilmington market basket used to be (laughs) the Wilmington estate? And, like, that's where a terrible crime of passion was committed. Oh, there's definitely a burial ground underneath this. Well, Boston's uh, a pretty old city. Like, Well, yeah, there's probably a lot of burial grounds under everything. It's the ghost of Matt Damon from The Departed. I don't know why he's haunting the frozen peas, though. That's the question I have. Why is this Victorian-era woman haunting the frozen peas? So, a ghost only exists on this material plane because sure. they have unfinished business mm-hmm. i'm saying that she was a victorian era activist socialist activist who was yes. saying that she saw the world turning into this like capitalistic t- dystopia and that's sure. a dictopia which is also accurate well um, yeah true um she saw the world turning into this capitalist dystopia and she wasn't able to change it in her life no she wasn't because of repression and oppression and all the bad Eshens. Um, yeah. So she's decided to try and change it in death, and she's starting one fucking pee at a time. So she's going to oh, scare yeah. away everyone who tries to buy anything at the Wilmington Market Basket, which That's is a, a great... That's a very good idea, yeah. It's a great name for a store also. It's but very you've got catchy. a Wilmington Market Basket, but you've got to be, like, really... You've got to start small. So if you can stop consumers it. buying frozen peas, <laughs> you can get consumers... The, the Wilmington Basket Market. <laughs> where all you can buy is baskets. <laughs> what? Where did that aside come from? I'm sorry, it just sounded so funny in my head. The Wilmington <laughs> market basket. basket. The Wilmington market basket. It's like, market. sorry, is this the Wilmington basket market? No, sorry, this is the Wilmington market basket. Oh fuck! I wanted a oh, basket. Shit. What can I buy here? Peas and ghosts. Only bloody peas. And they're all haunted. Uh, but, you know, this isn't the only person who's seen a ghost in this store. <laughs> so I'm so laughing at my own joke. Well, it's a very funny joke. And um, I will begin to laugh in 
T minus three, two, one. <laughs> Are oh you okay? God. Are you delirious? I mean, I feel a little bit. I'm a little bit sick. Spoilers, everyone. <coughs> so I am I. I currently have the cold sweats. Um, so mm. this is going to be good. It's going to be a good experience. If, oh my God, um, it's only been 16 minutes. I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> to many, it seemed the post was made in jest, but soon after it went up, others came forward and agreed that they had also seen something spooky inside the store while picking up food. It was the manager, Beth. He's a real creep. <laughs> I've seen something like this, but younger, one person wrote. Definitely around that era, though, the clothes and hairstyle. <laughs> That's the worst sentence I've ever heard. I've seen something like this, but younger. You can apply yeah. that to anything and it's creepy. Oh, like, for sure. If you say that about, like, a cat, it's creepy. Well, Shane Dawson's cat, I hope she was of age. <laughs> oh, no. After- <laughs> oh, no, Shane. Oh, no, Shane. Why did you post that on your... Uh, internet. Uh, internet. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, Wilmington Market Basket has underage ghosts as well as old lady ghosts, all in Victorian-era clothes. I feel like if I'm going to engage with a ghost, I feel an underage ghost is worse because an old lady ghost, like, I feel all right fighting that ghost, but I don't want to have to harm an underage ghost. Mm -hmm. You know, like, if I have to defend myself against a ghost using whatever curses and spells, I would much rather that ghost be an adult so that it's, like, more legally okay for me to harm. Absolutely, and, like, it has to be, like, Oh, sorry, one of my tabs has randomly started playing music. What music is it playing? Is it playing a spooky music? No, it's like a pop-up ad music. Is it spooky pop-up ad music? No, it's not. Uh, I forgot what I was saying now, because that was just such an alarming experience to me. Um, I forgot what you were saying, because I'm quite out of it, and my memory lost about a second right now. Hang on, hang on. How do I stop this? Ah! Okay. This may be the worst episode of the podcast we've ever made. This may be the worst episode we've ever made. And I'm very sorry t- about that. We're only 20 minutes in. We're it's only been 20 minutes Pretty in. consistently a disaster. What was I going to... I forgot what I was going to say then, because this pop-up ad came. Um, we'll talk about Wilmington Market Basket. We'll talk about underage ghosts. What I was going to say is that I hope if I ever encounter a ghost, it's the ghost of, like, a rich white male. Because I don't want to, like kill okay know. so this is based around like who you're most comfortable killing yeah precisely because I respect that. if i come across like you know let's say like a disabled uh black girl ghost i don't want to kill that that's not you know? ideal she's had a hard run in her life she doesn't deserve to be killed in her afterlife if i could meet you any know? ghost i'd like it to be the ghost of rupert murdoch so rupert that when murdoch's I sp- ghost go ahead do but, whatever but, you want he's had a good run in his and life because that also that would mean he'd be dead. And then secondly, I would then get to <laughs> slay him a second time. And I'm very excited about that. Both of those prospects, if I'm being well, perfectly honest. Well, you know, it's honest. like people who've had a good run in their life, they can get slayed in their afterlife. It's just <laughs> fair. It's just fair. Rupert, purge Rupert. Hashtag purge Rupert. <laughs> Hashtag send Rupert through the veil. <laughs> send Rupert to the other side and he may never return. What would his unfinished business be? Like, why is he sticking around? Uh, the he world. didn't make enough money? There are still people living happily in the world. <laughs> there are still people that have money that aren't him. Yeah. yeah. It's like, okay, if I was a ghost, though, I would hope my unfinished business is something so complicated so that I could last that as no- long as possible. Non-white people exist, and that's a big problem for him. Mm, it, 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 yeah, it sure is. <laughs> I would hope that my unfinished business isn't just something like you forgot to take the washing off the line and then, like, you have to, like, if you don't want to go back sent through the veil, you have to prevent people from taking the washing off the line for an eternity or else you're going to get sent through the veil. Well, but isn't being sent through the veil a good thing? Don't you want to get to the other side? You don't like being stuck here? No, you want to, like, hang out and, like, see the world and spook people and have a bit of fun with your haunting. I just want to see how Avengers 4 ends. That's all I need. Maybe do some, like, paranormal activity stuff. I just... I want to see the ending of... (laughs) Avengers 4. Literally, that... Okay, there's no TV shows that I'm watching, like, actively at the moment 
So that's probably the closest sure. thing to a TV show that I'm actually watching. Is well, like I mean, it's a, it might as well be a TV show. There's so many episodes. Yeah, exactly. My friend... Supernatural is ending after season 15. Uh-oh. So I might have to, like, that's watch definitely the entire series. Business. Well, that's my unfinished business because I haven't watched anything since the end of season seven. Okay, so, so you've got a considerable amount of Supernatural I've got to a watch. considerable amount to go... But now I know that it's finishing... I know there's an end in sight. It's not going to be like something that just continues forever and you never catch up. My, um, so my, my friend and I, my friend Sufyan and I went to see Captain Marvel recently, which I enjoyed and he which, enjoyed. Which uh, my sister worked on because her name's in the credits. So that's important to mention. I did not stay for all of the credits. Well, um, that's too bad for so you. So sorry, Rebecca. Um, but he enjoyed it a lot more than I expected him to, because he's not a comic book movie kind of person. No. Um, so I then was like, will you come see Avengers 4 with me? Because literally no one else will. Um, yes, because I certainly will not. No, I know you will not. Um, and <laughs> my wonderful new partner, Jessica, I asked if she would go and see it. And she said yes, but she said it in a tone of voice that to me suggested she would, but would much rather not. And it would be good yeah. if I could find someone else who would do it yeah, instead. Yeah, it, it, it was one of those, like, y- yeah? It's like, yeah? Do, do I have to? Uh, yeah. And you're kind of like, uh, I, I, don't, don't wanna, I don't want to I don't ask you anymore. I don't want to make you. I want someone who actually is interested in being there. So, and so if, I can give a fuck what he wants. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, but so... Then so cause he's very much an all or nothing kind of guy. So he's like, sure. okay, I'm going to watch all of the Marvel movies in the lead up to this. And then I that's was like, that's a lot of movies. Oh, I don't know if that's a good idea, son. Um, so he, he came over to my house the other day and we watched Iron Man one and he was in a very bad mood by the end of it. <laughs> um, so I don't think this project, we've got six weeks to watch 21 movies. That's I don't, a lot of movies. I don't think it's going to go great. Um, yeah. So what I think is going to happen is we're probably going to watch like two more and then he's going to say, fuck it. And then we're going to watch Avengers four and he's not going to know what's going on, but I'm going to well, have a great that, time. That seems about right. Yeah. So that's just what's going on in my life. I think I watched one of the Avengers. I think it was the first Avengers movie and I didn't have any no. idea what was going on. I will admit because pre- the only like movie of that, like cinematic universe I'd seen prior to that was, Iron Man 3. So I've seen one Avengers and Iron Man 3, and I don't think I'm very, like, down with what's happening in the universe. That's fair. In the defense, Iron Man 3 is one of the worst ones. Um, <laughs> it was, uh, The whole time, I'm just thinking, there's a lot of cool suits that are cooler than his suit. Why is he wearing just the boring suit every time? That's a fair question. I'm sure there's probably an in-universe explanation, but I don't care. I don't care for that shit. I just think, why are you wearing the dumb suit <laughs> and not the cool suit? You want him to wear the cool suit instead. Yeah. Now, do you have a story? I have some stories, yes. I'll be um, back in one moment, though, because I'm going to go see if my chicken is burnt. Okay. <laughs> this is a good time to do that. Okay, you do that. I'm going to... I'll be back in, like, one ga- minute. Gather my thoughts. Get your story together. Um, Alison has left the room. It is eerily quiet. Um, my body right now feels like garbage from a toilet. And, uh, it's not ideal for podcast recording, but what can I say? I'm committed to you people. All three of you. Oh, she oh, it's gosh. Alison's the- back. The fun thing about what I just discovered is that my oven has been off this whole time. (laughs) (laughs) You dipshit! Oh my god! It was on, but because my oven is the kind of oven that has a fire inside it, when I turned down the heat, the fire completely went off and then it didn't relight itself. Oh no. Does that mean your apartment's been filling with gas? Um, potentially. But it's okay, because uh, the fire's back on, so it's going to burn through all of that gas. Okay, if you blow up in a second, can you maybe <laughs> open a window or something, just in case? Because I really we, don't I want you to up, explode. That would be really good content. 
Well, I mean, no, because we're only 26 minutes in, and that's going to be... I don't want to edit that. That's going to be no, a whole thing. It's... I'll have to record but... the rest of the show by myself with your corpse. And I, that sounds... <laughs> I mean, my ghost will come out, because the, my unfinished business will be that this podcast didn't finish recording. That's true. The, also, this podcast will be confiscated by the police, so... By, well, by every kind of you know, Ghostbusters. And by the Ghostbusters as well, that's true. And it'll be put in a black box and I will, I mean, I'll be taken to the ghost prison, obviously, because I'm party to the the ghost crimes. And you could sell it on like spooky eBay where people sell spooky things and make a lot of money. Cool, bay. I can't think of a funny portmanteau of eBay and spooky. Um, No. (laughs) We've got like a spoopol, what is it? What did I say? Spoopoloo? Stop. Um, so <laughs> this story was sent to me by regular contributor Marianne. Thank um, you, Marianne. Thank you, Marianne. Um, so this is at uh, Yahoo News, the AU, Australian okay. Yahoo. Okay, wonderful. Something. Um, the headline reads, Man bullied by... F- sorry, man bullied, in inverted commas, okay. <laughs> by farting colleague... Seeks $1.8 million payout. Oh, that's a big payout. It's a significant amount of money. A Melbourne engineer who claims his colleague repeatedly farted nearby and trusted <laughs> his bum at him <laughs> is hoping his bullying claim is successful on appeal. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, on, a, on appeal? He's a, oh, so, he's someone's a already made a decision that he can't claim this and then he's gone back to appeal that? That is correct. Oh my gosh. David Hinkst, 56, has sought $1.8 million in a suit against his former employer, Construction Engineering, but a judge blasted the case out of the Supreme Court last year, finding there was no bullying. Mr. Hinkst's <laughs> appeal came before the Court of Appeal on Monday when he said, quote, flatulence, flatulence was a form of bullying, and his ex-colleague <laughs> Greg Short was a serial farter. Um, okay. I would be sitting with my face to the wall, and he would come into the room, which was small and had no windows, Mr. Hinks <laughs> said after the hearing. He would fart behind me and walked away. He would do this five or six times a day. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a couple of ways that this oh story God. could have played out. Either he was a serial farter coming in and, like, you know... And that's not Prop bullying. dusting this man's space. That's not bullying. That's just an incredibly funny, objectively funny prank. Uh, it depends. It depends on what his farts smell like, actually. Sure. But I don't think that would be very pleasant. Oh, wait, because it gets, um, it gets worse. Okay. So the structural engineer who previously lived and trained in Germany for 20 years, said Mr. Short, at the time his manager, had also abused him over the phone and at times would taunt him with gestures. He thrusted his bum at me while he's at work. (laughs) (laughs) That was so... That's... It's like threatening (laughs) to fart. It's like it's threatening to fart, to blast one out. It's like, you know, he's showing his weapon. (laughs) (laughs) It's the equivalent of, like, the cowboy, like... Opening the jacket to show the gun a little bit. Yeah, but exactly. It's that, he just like turns fart. his bum around a little bit to show you what is this. But the appeal judges also heard that Mr. Hinkst had called his colleague Mr. Stinky on occasion. <laughs> <laughs> and get ready. And you sprayed deodorant at him, just as Philip Priest said. <laughs> what is it? How old are these people? Fifty-six. <laughs> they sound like they're five or six, not 56. Oh my god. I just, the concept of grown men doing this, I don't understand men. Is um, this what people, is this what men do in their free, in their like workplace? I mean, I've never done that, but they I don't know if I qualify. They each other and call each other Mr. Stinky. To be fair, I've almost exclusively worked with women in my professional lifetime. Sure. So like... I've never farted on it, but I've recently worked on a podcast project and like whenever I would be editing that and that was with other, other boys, I would just be like farting up a storm. So like, yeah, of course that's what happens. As soon as the women leave the room, 
Yeah. Do I men would... just start farting and spraying deodorant everywhere? Well, they were in um, England, so what I had to do was, like, post them some deodorant and say, like, hey, can you spray this on yourself because I can't And then they do, do and they're like, oh, Chris, come on. Come on. I just wanted to let one out. Um, Mr. Stinky. Mr. Stinky. <laughs> can you imagine taking this to a court of law? What an incredibly uh, <laughs> shitty nickname. Like, it's not a good put down. <laughs> No. Mr. Stinky. It's, it's quite like, weak. Uh, he called me Mr. Stinky. It's, yeah, it, it's quite... It my, is very weak. My response to that is just, like, blank-faced. Like, I have no response to it. Yeah, I'm just like, okay. In any case, Justice Priest said farts were not the key issue in Mr. Hink's original claim, as it had focused more on phone calls. But Mr. Hink said the flatulence has caused him severe stress and should be taken into account. <laughs> So the okay. justice was like, maybe we focus on the more serious part. And he's like, no, we, uh, I, I want we, to focus on the but, farting part. But hang on. But hang on. He sent you, like, death threats over the phone call. Is that not what you want to focus on here? He farted at me so much. Yeah, but you called him Mr. Stinky. So can we get back to the phone call case, the one that we're here to deal with? He claimed Mr. Short's behavior was part of a conspiracy to get rid of him. And so his time at construction <laughs> a engineering A conspiracy course, of farters? Yeah, they were, trying to ga- they were trying to gas him out, trying to flush him out. Oh, no. <laughs> and so his, tears, his time at construction engineering caused him psychiatric injuries. Oh, pre- it- presumably some sort of, like, smell phobia. Oh, dear. Um, Mr. Hinks, who has represented himself throughout the trial and appeal... <laughs> Is seeking leave to appeal on several grounds. Never a good idea to represent yourself. Oh my gosh. Um, He claims he didn't get a fair trial as he felt under pressure from Supreme Court Justice Rita Zammett when questioning witnesses and felt the judge was biased against him. But Justice Priest. Yeah, sure. But Justice Priest said the trial seemed to show a remarkable latitude to Mr. Hicks during the 18 day (laughs) proceedings. be if you're you're the judge in this situation you're not allowed to laugh when he says but oh, he your honor he called me, me mr stinky he me mr stinky he <laughs> on me and i don't like it i ima- i just don't understand taking this to a court of law like i feel like it's an argument that got out of hand like he was like can you not oh, fart and he's time. like what are you gonna do about it and he's like i'll fucking see you and he'd be like no you won't and he'd be like oh really and then supreme court is the logical end goal of that yeah well it is if you're if you're a rich guy if you're a dude with money supreme court is where you take your arguments to you can no longer like tattletale to your mom or to the teacher you have to take it to, to the supreme court justice Zimmet, I think absolutely, was her name. absolutely. He's the only person who can deal with the seriousness of this case. I think that we need to get like all the primary school disputes settled in this sort of way as well. Yeah, like, absolutely. Take it to the Supreme Court. Write to the Supreme Court. Yeah, like Kevin said that my mum is smelly, and I would like it if you could tell Kevin that his mum is smelly, and that would be yeah. good. And so then that the would... judge has to find out whose mum is smellier, and that's going to be a really unpleasant conversation for <laughs> so everyone the, involved. the mums have to, like, come out in, like, the... <laughs> you know, in those rooms in the, you know, like, television shows like CSI, where all the people are in the lineup, but they like, judge just comes in, like, with a blindfold. And... <laughs> <sighs> so do you have another story for me? Well, I did... Remember, we, we laid out my three stories at the start. Oh, that's right, yes. And okay. We're up so to the... We've gone... Political. So We've spooky, spooky fart, fart, political. Sp- <laughs> spooky fart, political, and then later, if we have time, I'll get into the little bit of a lewd story that's coming. Spoopaloo. Uh, so this is one <laughs> from my hometown, and oh. the local. This is a. It started off with a bit of a a bit of a drama that was unfolding because our local MP, David Gillespie, received a mysterious package outside his home that uh, police had to investigate. So Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, a bit of a political intrigue here. But, but, uh, the person who sent the package has come out to explain the situation as to (laughs) why he chose to send such a package. So, anyway, I'll, I'll read the headline because it's just baffling. It says, 
Suspicious package sent to MP David Gillespie's home, a grand plan to combat obesity. Oh, God. This is going to end poorly. Yeah, this is just like a series of... This lovely man... (laughs) This is going to end poorly. (laughs) Yeah. Oh. (laughs) Yeah, that's... Yeah, right, that's (laughs) That's a bad one, huh? Well, you made up, you came up with that one yourself. That's a, uh, we can't blame Shut that up. one on anyone else. <laughs> trying to get a message. Tell, tell me your damn story. <laughs> trying to get a message to a politician isn't always easy. Just ask Red Hill resident, 70 year old Jeff Agnew. Mr. Agnew was trying to send line MP, Mr. David Gillespie, his five point fitness plan, which he believes is a game changer for the obesity crisis crippling Australia. <laughs> oh dear God. Okay. Okay. So you, you're a man, you've come up with this plan for combating obesity and you want to send it to the local MP. How do you do that? Fucking email. Yeah, right. You attach the PDF. I know he won't read it, but he's not going to read it in any context that I oh, send it to. Oh, he him. certainly, he certainly did receive this letter. That's true. I suppose this guy's approach did work. Well, I mean, he certainly got the letter to the yeah. MP, and the MP certainly received the letter. There's no such thing as bad publicity. Well, sure. It said instead. Dr. Gillespie's home went into lockdown, the bomb squad was dispatched from Sydney, and Mr. Agnew was hauled before local police after it was suspected the strange cylindrical package was a bomb. Oh my god, what in... For for the record, people who are listening, my hometown is about five hours' drive from Sydney. The bomb squad has had to drive five hours to Port Macquarie to investigate. Oh fuck, that's so good. It was the Sydney Bomb Squad? The Sydney Bomb Squad went to Port Macquarie to investigate this package. Oh my god, you may as well call the Thunderbirds at that point. Yeah, yeah. Might as well just get the straight in, like, ASIO, FBI in here. I feel like if I had a cylindrical bomb-shaped package, let's just call it what it is, a bomb-shaped package in my mail, and the police were like, I'll be there in five hours, you would... There is a very good chance that I'm going to get too curious and that I'm going to try and hurt yeah, lock myself. Yeah, like you just like every every few minutes you're like looking at the mailbox and like, come on, I just want to check. It could, it might be a I'll bomb. Like, it could be something else. If if Jeremy Renner can do it, I can do it. So yeah, like that's for sure. what. Like I'm just going to cut one of the coloured wires and hopefully there'll be like enough, you know, clues around the around the box that I'll know what colour wire to cut. For solving the I think clues. it's usually the usually the red one, but if, it'd be good if there was a riddle involved. Yeah, there's always a riddle just... involved in bombs, as far as I'm aware. Everything that I know tells me there's a riddle involved in bombs. Uh, but so, how do you go from trying to send your five point fitness plan to an MP to sending a suspicious bomb shaped package to an MP? You know, in medieval times, when they would send each other like scrolls. Yeah. That's the literally the only context in which well, I can Well, that's basically of... what he's done. What a dipshit. So let's oh let's God. have a listen to this step-by-step plan. It all went awry for Mr. Agnew when he met Charlotte Gillespie, the wife of Dr. Gillespie, at a funeral for Penelope Bly, the wife of renowned medical practitioner John Bly a few months ago. Ms. Gillespie is believed to have expressed some interest in Mr. Agnew's five-point plan. <laughs> I don't okay, think she so did. She, so they were standing she around at, him. They were standing she, around in a funeral, Chris, at the coffee table, yeah. like where the tea and coffee are, and he's like, oh, your husband's a doctor. Hey, your husband's the MP. You know, I've got a five-point plan. She's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My friend like, just Let me died. tell you about it. Oh, you know, maybe send it to me later, she says, getting just, her tea and coffee and walking away. Oh my god. That's <laughs> the worst meet cute I've ever heard as we met at a funeral. And yeah. I, she mostly ignored me. Yeah. So she's ex- believed to have expressed some interest in Mr. Agnew's five point plan. So Mr. Agnew decided to send the couple a copy of the plan. He believed this would get the plan into the public, as he was aware Dr. Gillespie was a member of Parliament, doctor, and former assistant health minister. Mr. Agnew describes himself as old school, and after finding out Dr. Gillespie's address through a mutual medical friend, he decided to hand deliver the package instead of posting it or sending it via email. (laughs) He decided to plant it. Oh my god. (laughs) He wanted to do something special 
for the couple to get oh. their attention. So he I elaborately mean, he packaged that. the plan, which was sent on a USB stick along with two pedometers in a postal cylinder. Oh, my God. He then attached the cylinder to the Roman flag with the letter SPQR, which stands for Senatus Populus Romanus, the Senate and the Roman people. Two dog collars were used to keep the parcel together. What the actual fuck? <laughs> what is this letter? This sounds like the fucking <laughs> thing that, uh, like, an S&M kit gets delivered yeah. in. Yeah. Like you, so you've th- you've used like dog a, collars to fasten your Roman... cylindrical package to the Roman flag, and you're just going to stake that in someone's yard. It's a very confused aesthetic. Is my biggest problem. <laughs> that there's way too much going on. There's a lot like it's going not, on. Um, it's not svelte at all. They don't they don't say it in the actual text, but looking at the picture, you can see it's also wrapped in ribbon, like a maypole kind of thing going on. <laughs> Um, so any of my friends that listen to this show, if any of you ever give me any sort of gift that's not wrapped in this exact fashion oh, ever please. again, if you're it's ever going sending straight me fan in mail, the fucking garbage. If you're sending me fan mail, it must be sent like this. I want it to have Roman flag, two dog collars, wrap <laughs> like ribbon, cylindrical. I want to be very frightened of yeah, it. Yeah, and then you open the, like, you stick the USB in and it just says, cool show, guys, five stars, and then a thumbs up. Send it to P.O. Box 9999, Sydney, um, 2001 as a postcode for P.O. Box in Sydney. I'm sure someone owns that P.O. Box and they're in for a fun surprise. Oh, they're going to be calling the bomb squad. But at least the bomb squad will already be in Sydney. This will become, I'm into this idea because then they will go back to this guy because he'll be the only like linking suspect. Oh, he will be the guy who sends letters like this. <laughs> he has to get brought in <laughs> to be questioned. It's just weird. Who does this? <laughs> so he said that, you know, Mr. Agnew understood Dr. Gillespie was a keen philosopher who was a fan of the ancient Roman philosopher Seneca. Mr. Agnew was unaware a growing number okay. of white supremacist groups had begun adopting oh the ancient God, acronym dude. to symbolize their movement. Oh my so God. So he's put a he's white a supremacist Nazi bomb. slogan on a Roman flag and then put it in someone's Fastened yard. It with- do- fastened it with dog collars, so it's a it's a S and M Nazi bomb. Yes, <laughs> a Nazi S and M bomb in an MP's <laughs> yard is probably not the best way to send your fitness plan to them. It's maybe the worst possible way. <laughs> like, I can't think of a worse way to send your fitness plan to someone. Jesus but Christ. you know, Mr. Agnew, he knew what he was doing. He said, "I knew David would understand once he read it." Mr. Agnew said. I Mr. Used... Agnew sounds like a terrifying stalker. He's, He's like a very weird David, guy. David gets me. David, David and I understand me. each other. I used that flag because David was a politician and I wanted to bring it to his attention. It was a health plan. But unfortunately, it was seen as some type of bomb threat. It was a bit of yeah. theatre, but poignant. I wanted to get their attention. Can I say that the Roman flag is an odd choice? You'd think like an ancient Greek flag, uh, given that that is the birthplace of democracy, yeah, would I make d- way d- more sense. It's I'm very weird. confused. Maybe he gets Ro- Rome and Greece mixed up? Yeah, I, I really don't know. Like put like an Athenian flag on it or something. <laughs> it's really bizarre. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's really... The story goes into it and it tells us a little bit more about Mr. Agnew. He works at Ricardo's Strawberries and Tomatoes, which, by the way, has very delicious jam and uh, Devonshire tea served in-house. Oh. Yeah. Tell you what, if you ever go to Port Macquarie, head on down to Ricardo's Strawberries and Tomatoes and have some of their Devonshire tea. Um, Is the jam in a cylindrical Roman flag container (laughs) fastened with dog collars? Of course. How else would you serve jam? Exactly. I don't understand. That's how anyone serves their jam in Port Macquarie. It's really confusing because whenever I go to Woolworths, I can never find the jam because I'm always looking for... You're looking for dog collar Roman flag... S&M. Yeah, like a jam, Nazi a jam S&M container. Bombs. That's what <laughs> jam containers are, essentially. Yeah, it's, it's a, a jar. It's a Nazi s and bomb. Like, that's what it is. I don't it's, see what... Of course. Of course. Am I going to call this episode Nazi s and bomb? I feel like I've said it enough times. Well, we've said I, it a lot of times. Yeah. We can make that work. We can make it work. Is it? Is it tasteful? 
No, it's actually very distasteful, and I might not it's for that very reason, distasteful. considering recent events. <laughs> um, anyway, is there any more to this? Uh, not really, but I will, I will end up that um, Mr. Agnew has learned his lesson. He says, Mr. Agnew swears by the success of the five-point plan, which involves small minimum training, a very simple plan to build muscle and burn fat. But Mr. Agnew said he will use more traditional, less risky methods to get it out there next time. Yeah, it's, I think that's for the best. And I also, would say, your, that's probably a good idea. Also, your fitness plan sounds kind of boring. Your fitness um, plan sounds like eat healthy and do other, exercise, which is yeah, not n- what I want to hear from like a miracle no five-point plan. I want, like, wake up in the morning, get have shower, eat get chocolate, sit on swole. couch, and then that gets me swole. Yeah, like, you want to get do... swole from doing that. That's what you want the miracle yeah. plan to be. Exactly. If I can just put a machine that, like, attaches to my neck and that makes me swole, that would be ideal. Yeah, like the swole, the swole machine. Yeah. You don't... <laughs> swole, swole machine. <laughs> you don't want anything that's going to involve work, because that kind of defeats the purpose. Um, can I give you a very quick little story? It's barely even a story between this and the lewd story oh, yeah, that's of course, yet to of come. Um, so this is from the Canberra Times, and the headline is, Canberra population sprints past 420,000. Oh, New figures show. Oh, boy! 420 so, blazing it in the Canberra capital. They've chosen to highlight this particular number. They <laughs> well, sure have. But it is kind of a milestone number, and I'm really glad they chose to highlight it, because I appreciate that. So, the basically, there's Canberra's been growing, bloody fucking duh. Um, yeah. but no one cares. The, no, the number that it has reached um, at the time of the report, which is the something... Yes. Let me just op- open this up in my browser because I have lost the number for some reason. <gasps> I know, it's very frustrating. Okay, so it's currently 420,960. Whoa! Which they- it's, not as, it's not as good as 69 and what that usually symbolizes. But sure. what I think it could symbolize, if you think about like the numbers 96, is two people lying on a bed together facing away from each other. Yeah, like top and tail... Top and yeah. tail facing the opposite but direction. But they don't, they don't want to smell the nasty feet, so they've turned away from each other. It's like, you know, when you are in a school camp and for some reason you have to share a bed with someone. And you want yeah, to, this like, is how you sleep. You've got to be, like, as no homo as possible and sleep as far away from them as possible. <laughs> because, you know, like, you couldn't possibly sleep in the same bed in a normal way. And not be... That's disgusting. Disgusting. That's Um, gross. That's grotty. It also, I think, is appropriate because one of the side effects of marijuana use is um, a reduced libido. Sure. Uh, So that's how they're... That's how they're chosen to lay after they are. Yeah, I think that's why it's... I'm not going to say how I know that. Um, I think that's just (laughs) why that is the number that they've really sort of zeroed in Yeah, well, this is known. This is knowing... A knowing choice by the Canberra Times. Um, I feel like that sets us up for a lewd story. I was not kidding when I said it was little. That's well, like literally it is all little, it is. but I appreciate that. And it does set us up nicely for this last story, which I am reading from the Gold Coast Bulletin. That's the only place that a lewd story can come oh, from, Oh, of course. Really. But I believe it was originally from news.com.au. But Typical. But it is from Queensland, the land of yep. Queens. Uh, so let's get into it. It says, Kmart's viral X-rated toy shocks unsuspecting mum. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, dear. So this is a, a story about a mum who's gone to Kmart. <laughs> Sorry, I just imagine so, like a middle-aged woman walking into Kmart, looking at the bananas and just being like, disgusting. That's exactly what happened, though. Because it Wait. was like a toy banana <laughs> that you can peel <laughs> and inside is a phallic object. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 but what looks like a phallus is in fact a thumb so this is a toy oh. where you peel what looks like a banana and there is a thumb inside but in the picture that is shown the thumb is turned away so that the nail cannot be seen but the people have gone to the effort to put the detail of the thumb crease in <laughs> so- <laughs> what i like about this is that a thumb is not a large object. No. So it's kind of just like a, a 
sex toy, but of a very flaccid penis. They made like a, a very little... big thumb, though. It's a very big oh, thumb. Oh, is it a very large thumb? It's a, a very, giant like, thumb. Like a novelty thumb. Oh, oh, oh. And it, okay. sh- it shows the picture of the mum, I believe the mum, holding a blue banana peel <laughs> with a large novelty <laughs> thumb pointing the opposite way with the detailed thumb crease in it. <laughs> <laughs> So she saw a novelty thumb and thought, this is dildo. Like, is this literally what the story is? Yes. What the fuck is wrong with this planet <laughs> and the people who live on it? So, Rianne Dutrom from uh, News.com.au brings us this story. It says, A Queensland mother was caught completely off guard when her three-year-old daughter produced a rather explicit-looking toy during a recent <laughs> trip to Kmart. Hey, Mum, look what I found at Kmart, this big dildo. <laughs> <laughs> I think in a more sex-positive world, there would be a dildo aisle in Kmart. Well, and I sure. Just think I that... mean, I believe Kmart's the kind of store that has everything. I mean, there's a kid's section. What's the opposite of that? It's a dildo section. Yeah, so, like, sure. Well, I mean... From a marketing perspective, that's just good business. Because if you have, like, the sex section, then you'll have more kids to right. buy stuff from the and kids section. And then the kids, kids will be buying more toys from the kids section. It, it's perfect. And then the adults will be buying more toys from the adults section. It, it, it goes around. It feeds into each other. So Catherine Douglas from Rockhampton told News.com.au she had been at her local Kmart store with her two daughters, aged six and three, when they made the disturbing discovery. Oh, for fuck's sake. We were having a look around the doll section when my three-year-old came around the corner with this thing in her hand, Ms. Douglas said. <laughs> my first she impression kids. She's was total a dick shock, before. I said. What's that? Give it to me now. <laughs> Considering what was flopping around in her daughter's hand, it's easy to see why her reaction was so strong. <laughs> distance, the squishy, flesh-coloured item looks a heck of a lot like a penis. A penis wrapped in some sort of blue sheath or wrapping. (laughs) so cute. (laughs) Like it's blue cellophane condom. I'm into that. That's very fun. It's not blue cell. It's like the banana peel. The blue banana peel around this thumb. Yep. You peel That's the banana peel and it reveals a giant novelty thumb. Well, that that is how penises work, as you do and have to remove the banana peel before you can use it. Putting aside the phallic nature of this toy, <laughs> what kind of, like, what is this? What concept is this? You're going to, like... It's an extreme... Is it actually, like, look like a banana peel? Yes! Like what? It's a banana peel that you peel and inside is a giant novelty thumb. I don't... That's what the toy is. I think this is something that was manufactured in Canberra when they hit 420,000 people. <laughs> like, I can't contend a world in which a sober person did this. You go to, like, the pitch meeting for, like, the toy company, and you're like, now, let me lay this down. <laughs> Just it's get, blue now, banana. Now but wait, when wait, you peel li- it, now inside listen. is a thumb. Hey, you guys, uh, listen. Hey, hey, hey listen. Hey, hey, wait, you, wait, come on. What if we made a banana with, listen. It's blue. A banana. It's banana blue peel's banana. blue and it's got a, th- got a big thumb and it looks like a nasty <laughs> dick. <coughs> How good would that be? How much money are we going to make? None. How much does it cost to make? None. All right, fuck it. It's approved. Now, the thing is, there's a whole collection of these banana peel toys that have different sorts of shapes inside them. You could get anything inside your banana peel. It's like a collector's item. You open okay. your banana peel and you don't know what's inside. It could be a thumb... But- or but it could Allison, be a corn, or it could be what looks like anal beads. By but virtue I'm... of it being banana peel shaped, yes, literally everything will be phallic in some way or another. Well, they've got, as I said, they've got a series that I, I think it's supposed to be peas, but it does look suspiciously like anal, anal beads. beads. I mean, look, I feel like kids shouldn't have those. No. Um, corn, I feel like you could get frisky with corn if you try hard enough. So, uh... like... don't know there's a picture of all of the toys that you can get inside your banana peel by the way here and it says the orb oddities fusion foods come in many disturbing shapes and sizes picture orb, Kmart. orb oddity is 100 percent the name of a dildo oh like, it, that it is so, sure is what what Kmart's done is they've accidentally <laughs> ordered like a stock of dildos and then they're like shit 
Can we pretend this is a children's this toy? Stuff. What if we put it in banana peels and then sell it <laughs> the, to kids? The other picture here is someone peeling the thumb banana, <laughs> and it says, unpeel the toy to reveal a distressing surprise. I'm very into this idea of rebranding all <laughs> sex toys as kids' toys. Like, fun police fuzzy handcuffs. Like, <laughs> this fun vibrating buzzer. Like yeah. this, <laughs> you can you can innocentify all of this stuff so easily. Well, exactly. If you accidentally ordered extra stock for the adult section, put it in the kids section and rebrand it. And so many of those adult toys are very bright, vivid colors as they well. Sure they really are. draw yeah. draw a child's eye. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. So yeah, I just think that's and it's a like, business you know, practice. Like if you've got like the do. blow up doll, you can just say shocked lady doll. <laughs> shocked lady doll. <laughs> <laughs> she just looks like I'm very shocked all the time. And like the advertising campaign for the shocked lady doll. Basically, do your kids like, like playing doctors? Yes. Now play doctors with shocked lady doll. Yeah, it's like a dentist. Actually, you can play dentist. Oh, I'm into that. <laughs> So our mouth opens very wide, <laughs> so you can really do a lot of dentistry in You can there. do a lot of dental work, but please don't use real <laughs> dentistry equipment because it may break her fragile She, she will pop. She will pop. Yeah. Oh, but maybe that's the aim. It's like it's a good dentistry practice so you don't pop the doll. Oh, that's true. It's like operation, except like when you operation. fuck up, you have to buy a new one. <laughs> yeah, every time you have to buy a new one. Which is like, from a capitalist point of view as well, it's also that's a good very marketing good. technique. So, it's a one-time use dentistry shock lady dentistry doll. Dentistry shock lady doll simulator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. This is maybe the worst and dumbest. It's just a weird toy. It's, it's just very... Like, you unpeel... It says here, it goes, the suggestive looking toys are essentially a squishy surprise that comes wrapped in a banana peel. You never know what your child. Oh I, my I, God, Chris. Again, hang on. Squishy Stop. surprise is one. Hu- what? They've typed your, as in Y O U R apostrophe R E child. Those fuckers. Come on, news.com.au. You've got enough money to fix this. You Come never on, know. Rupert. What you can afford your, spell check. You are child is going to unpeel. An index finger, a unicorn horn, a cob of corn, the sky is the limit. An index finger. An index finger. Maybe it's just a human finger, like it, an it's actual... It's just a real human finger. I think this is... I think you're right. I think this is just where the bodies are buried, but like with Kmart's stock take that they got a lot of extra shit they didn't need and they just wrapped it all in these <laughs> weird... Maybe these blue banana peels are just like delivery things yeah. they've like reused. Absolutely. Now, my favourite thing here is that news.com.au has finished... Well, the Gold Coast Bulletin has finished this off with, what do you think of the finger banana toy? Let us know below. <laughs> so, finger banana toy. so you can write your comments about the finger banana toy. <laughs> uh, this is what Realistic has to say. How damn precious can you get? It looks nothing like a penis. So looking at veggies, are cucumbers, zucchinis, or bananas sex toys as well? Get a yes. grip, woman, says Realistic. They are. Um, I love the idea of someone looking at this and being like, my husband's penis doesn't look anything like that. <laughs> and then everyone else being like, oh no. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is what Hillary has said. Kmart couldn't have asked for better advertising. I don't know if that's accurate. I, but know, I, I look don't know at, if that's accurate. This either. has made me curious to see this produce. I'll admit. You, you want to go and see like the squishy banana finger toy. Now that we've called it that, and that is what I will be naming the episode. The finger of the banana toy. No, squishy banana finger toy. That's the what it's going to be called. Squishy banana finger toy. Squishy banana finger toy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have nothing more to add to that. That's I think a, that's it a says lot all more it needs like to. PC name. That's a lot more that's like true. our speed, it's much more our acceptable. SJW speed. Our brand. Yeah. For on, sure. that n- on that note of squishy banana finger toy, shall we wrap up? Uh, shall we unpeel? Shall we repeel? <laughs> I don't know. Let's just put let's just put the let's fucking end this away. shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's I'm just... so every everybody. I'm sorry for this episode. It's been interesting. Um, I'm it's very been tired. something strange. My body feels bad all over. Yeah. Um, so please follow us on Twitter and Instagram. It's at Red Menace Cast. Um, email us your stories at redmenacecast at gmail.com or if you're friends with me, i.e. Marianne, please keep sending me stories. I love not <laughs> I love not doing work. It is very satisfying. It's really good. Um, so this final 
headline is from the West Australian. Okay. Tat's a disgrace. Former digger barred, barred from joining WA police over neck tattoo. T- oh, Jesus Christ. It's it's not great. It's not awesome. Tat's a, t- tat's, tat's a tat, disgrace. Tat's a disgrace, Western Australian. It's weird. That's, yeah. Yeah, tat's a disgraceful pun. Thank you for listening, everybody. Good luck and good night. Good luck.